This is a recording of the minutes of Friedrich Engels' lecture to the London German Workers' Educational Society from December 7th, 1847. This can be found in the Marx Engels Collected Works, Volume 6. Citizens, when Christopher Columbus discovered America 350 years ago, he certainly did not think that not only would the then existing society in Europe, together with its institutions, be done away with through his discovery, but that the foundation would be laid for the complete liberation of all nations. And yet, it becomes more and more clear that this is indeed the case. Through the discovery of America, a new route by sea to the East Indies was found whereby the European business traffic of the time was completely transformed. The consequence was that the Italian and German commerce were totally ruined, and other countries came to the fore. Commerce came into the hands of the Western countries, and England thus came to the fore of the movement. Before the discovery of America, the countries, even in Europe, were still very much separated from one another, and trade was, on the whole, slight. Only after the new route to the East Indies had been found, and an extensive field had been opened up in America for exploitation by the Europeans engaged in commerce, only then did England begin more and more to concentrate trade and to take possession of it, whereby the other European countries were more and more compelled to join together. From all this, big commerce originated, and the so-called world market was opened. The enormous treasures which the Europeans brought from America, and the gains which trade in general yielded, had, as a consequence, the ruin of the old aristocracy. And so, the bourgeoisie came into being. The discovery of America was connected with the advent of machinery. And with that, the struggle became necessary, which we are still conducting today, the struggle of the propertyless against the property owners. Before machines were invented, almost every country produced as much as it needed. And commerce consisted only of such products as one or another country was quite unable to produce. But when machinery came in, so much was produced that in places it became necessary to stop working, and that even people who had previously performed similar work with their own hands bought machine-made goods for their own use. The position of the former workers was thereby completely altered, and the whole of human society, which formerly consisted of four to six different classes, was divided into two mutually hostile classes. Since the English seized world commerce and raised their manufacturing business to such a height that they could provide almost all the civilized world with their products, and since the bourgeois came to political power, they have also succeeded in making further progress in Asia. And the bourgeoisie has risen there also, through the rise of machinery, the barbarian condition of other countries is constantly being done away with. We know that the Spaniards found the East Indies at the same stage of development as the English did, and that the Indians nevertheless went on living in the same way for centuries. In other words, they ate and drank and vegetated, and the grandson worked the land just as his grandfather had done, except that a number of revolutions took place which, however, were nothing but a struggle of various peoples for domination. Since the English came and spread their manufacturers, the livelihood of the Indians was torn from their hands, and the consequence was that they abandoned their stable condition. The workers are already immigrating from there, and through mixing with other nations, they become accessible for the first time to civilization. The old Indian aristocracy is completely ruined, and people are there set against one another, just as here. Later we have seen how China, 
a country which for more than a thousand years has defied development and all history. China too has now been turned upside down and drawn into civilization by the English, by machinery. Austria, the China of Europe, the only country whose internal institutions were not shaken by the French Revolution, and where even Napoleon could do nothing, cannot stand up to steam. Everything there has suddenly been changed by machinery. Protective tariffs have brought machinery into the country. Thereby, the petty bourgeoisie has raised itself up and overthrown the high aristocracy. Thereby, something has happened to Metternich, which he certainly never anticipated. At the last Bohemian Diet, 50,000 guilders in taxes were denied him by the bourgeoisie. The classes of society have been changed. The small craftsmen are being ruined and forced to become ordinary workers, whereby an element has entered which can become dangerous to Metternich. In Italy also, industry has raised itself up. The bourgeoisie everywhere sits on Metternich's neck, so that the government has got into such a dilemma that Metternich has to concede to the Bohemians that they need not pay taxes of 50,000 guilders. Thus, through the discovery of America, all society has been divided into two classes. And without the rise of the world market, this would not have happened. The workers of the whole world have everywhere the same interests. Everywhere, the different classes disappear and the different interests coincide. When, therefore, a revolution breaks out in one country, it must necessarily affect the other countries. And only now can real liberation take place. <laughs>